Can you shoot narrow band at 550 millimeters with an unmodified cheap DSLR on a Skywatcher Star Adventurer 2i during a full moon? The short answer is yes, you can. I took this image of the Wizard Nebula last night in a Bortle 3 location using a Pentax K70, an Evolux 62 ED, which is a very inexpensive telescope, around $300. Um, I used a reducer with that as well on a Star Adventurer during a full moon, and I was guiding for the first time ever. I had just that day received my guide scope, my guide camera, and my ASIR Mini, and learned how to use that in one night, and was able to take five hours of the Wizard Nebula doing five minute exposures. All right, step one, get yourself a sturdy tripod. This is a carbon fiber tripod, it's a Surui 284. This isn't the biggest tripod in the world, but it, it works for my situation. Next, screw on your Star Adventure. The reason I do this before I balance the tripod is I want to find where Polaris is going to be. So then when I put my tripod down, I can unscrew this, balance it, and when I screw it back on, it will be exactly in the position it was in before. To find Polaris, you're just going to want to use an app on your phone that shows the stars. Polaris isn't going to move. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. Okay, you're going to bend down. You're going to put your phone right up here and center Polaris right in the middle, making sure that on the Star Adventurer, you leave yourself room to go left and right with these screws just in case, okay? It's not perfectly centered. So after I do that, I'm gonna very simply unscrew this, all right? The Star Adventurer, okay? Once you get it unscrewed, when you screw it back on, it's gonna aim exact same position that you had it before. That's why it's important to screw it on really tight, and then when you put it back on, you screw it on that tight again, and it will be perfectly aligned. Now, the cheapest part of my astrophotography gear, a very basic level. I'm going to level each leg. So I'm gonna point it directly at each leg and I'm gonna make sure it's level, okay? And I'm gonna do this for about five minutes and making sure that that bubble is directly in the center each time, all right? So if the bubble's a little bit this way, I have to lower this leg a little bit and that leg a little bit. Then I'm gonna move this way and do this leg, move this way, do this leg. Then at the end, I will spin the whole thing around and make sure that bubble does not move from the center. Then you have a very balanced tripod. Before I do the balancing though, I'm gonna put a big weight down at the bottom here. All right, and the reason I do that is to push the legs down and make sure that it's not gonna dig further into the ground and change um, my balance during the night. All right, now we have screwed the Star Adventure all the way back on. All right, so now it is facing Polaris and it is perfectly balanced. Balance is the key. Because when I guide on a star adventure, I'm only going to guide in right ascension. All right, I can't guide in declination, but if you have very, very good balance, it's not going to matter that much, even at 550 millimeters. So as you can see, I use the Evolux 62 ED. I got this on Amazon. It was $300. I also bought the reducer. This brings the focal ratio down to about 5.9. Um, it's a 0.9 reducer. So it's this scope is 400 millimeters. The reducer brings it down to about 350, 360 millimeters. And then with my crop sensor DSLR, I get 550 millimeters. This telescope's been very good to me recently. Um, it is only a doublet, which is why it is very inexpensive. Obviously, a triplet or quadruplet's gonna give you um, a lot more direct light coming in and this does if you don't shoot narrow band it does typically blow out some of the bigger stars you get the blue halos around them but i found with narrow band i don't get any of that get yourself one of these this is a lifesaver before i attach any of the cameras the lenses anything i go through i'll, I'll do it to the top of the scope i'll go under here i will blow out all the dust all right, then I will immediately attach my cameras and everything. Very, very, very important to have one of these. Now this is my Pentax K70. I originally bought this because it came with a little GPS unit on top and it has an internal star tracking function, um, which is great for beginners. And that's what my plan was originally. Then I found out that if I get this guy, I could do a lot longer exposures. 
Um, so I invested in the Star Adventurer. Now, again, I will clean out this really well uh, before I attach it. Simply put it right onto the reducer, done. Um, obviously, if you're using a dedicated astronomy camera, it's going to give you a lot better, better results. Um, but this has done a great job for me. It's 24 megapixels. Um, the only issue I have is it does get hot. All right, that sensor heats up, and so the background of your images takes a little bit of work in post-processing. Um, but I absolutely love this camera. I can't see myself ever getting rid of this, um, even though I will eventually go to a dedicated astronomy camera. It is unmodified, and the other issue I have is that this will not talk to the a uh, ASI Air Mini. All right, so this is my rig completely set up just without the cords. Um, I have my mini scope, my guide camera, my ASI Air Mini, um, everything together. It is heavy, so I do need my two counterweights. So once everything is set up, I am going to first balance everything. I'm going to balance the declination, then I'm going to balance the um, right ascension, make sure everything is well balanced. Once my balance is complete, I'm going to pull a line Polaris with the Star Adventurer using the traditional method first. So along with this setup, I'm also using the Optolong L-Extreme. And this is an awesome filter. And when I bought it, I didn't guide. And I was noticing it was, the, the maximum I could get out of the Star Adventurer was two minutes at 550 millimeters. So I knew I had to be able to extend that time. So my only option was to either get a whole different rig or purchase the guide scope and guide camera, which I wasn't sure was going to work. So here's how I made it work. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I definitely, that's where I get most of my information from. Um, so here are my notes. Three things I wanted to do. First was to polar align using the mini and that worked outstanding. That was probably one of the most exciting times I had because I got that little smiley face almost right off the bat. All right, the next part of it was I wanted to be able to find my object, and I couldn't do that um, as well. What I was using was this green dot finder, all right? And I would look for an object, I would use the stars, and the advantage of using the star adventure, you have to learn the night sky. And I would use the stars, try to line it up, take a long exposure, hope I saw the image. That was the only way that this would work. All right, but now that I have ASIR Mini, I can plate solve. So all I did was I found my coordinates for the Wizard Nebula, all right, which are right here. And I aimed it where I knew it was roughly. And then I just kept moving, starting with right ascension until I got as close as I possibly could. And I got it down to 22 hours and 48 minutes. Don't worry about the seconds. And then once I did that, I did the declination till I got 58 degrees, 15 minutes. And boom, it was right there, almost dead center in there. So now I know I can find any object in the sky just by plate solving. All right. And the last part was the guiding. And this was the part I was most fearful of. Was it going to work? Um, I wasn't sure. You know, so I followed all of these directions. All right. Some of my beautiful drawings. All right. Once I did that, it found the star, it guided, um, and then I started taking pictures. All right, I took 65 minute um, lights, that's at five hours total, and I took uh, 12 darks, and I think about 25 flats, 25 bias. This is my first night ever using a guide scope. It's going great. I'm using a Star Adventurer right over here. Um, and I'm actually doing five minute exposures right now. Uh, my first time ever, uh, the most I've ever gotten on the, on the Star Adventurer is, is about two minutes. So um, I'm also using the L Extreme and also have a 86% moon right now. So uh, this is gonna be great. Um, everything looks really good. Um, I have my ISO set at 800. I'm doing the Wizard Nebula. Hoping to get about five hours of data tonight, and then I'll take my flats and my darks and my biased in the morning. If this works, this is going to be awesome. To get five minutes of guiding on a star adventure is unreal, so I'm real excited.
Once I started guiding and everything looked like it was going well, I use an inf intervalometer uh, for my camera because again, the Mini does not speak to my camera yet. I hope they will soon, but this worked out great. I set it for five minute exposures. I also don't have a dummy battery for this camera. So every two hours I have to wake up, come put a new battery in, and that's a little hectic. Uh, sometimes the battery door is not in a great position to get to the battery without moving the Star Adventure ever so slightly. So the first time I did it, I looked, nothing changed, everything was great. The second time I moved it slightly. So all I did was go back a step, found my object again, um, using the plate solving, just moved everything to center it again and started taking my pictures. So other than the cords that I don't have connected right now, I also have um, a dew heater that goes on the um, 62ED and I have a dew heater that goes on my um, guide scope. So that's key, I really needed those. I also power it using a Blue Eddy power bank. Um, that was much less expensive than the other versions. And by the end of the night, powering the Mini and both dew shields, um, I was at 40% left of my battery. So I know that's good. If I go somewhere like Cherry Springs, I could always just plug into power as well. I definitely wanna thank Ben from the Neuroband channel and Trevor from Astro Backyard as they have been a huge influence on me and my astrophotography. Um, you know, I don't spend a ton of money on it yet. This whole rig and everything cost maybe $2,500 completed. Um, and it's all I have. If you ever see me out at Cherry Springs, this is the only scope and, and um, mount that I have. Um, I am gonna upgrade eventually, but you know, I've only been doing this for about a year and a half now. And um, if you want to look at more of my images, uh, my YouTube's Getaway Greg, my Instagram's Getaway Greg, um, I have a TikTok, Getaway Greg. Um, I think my YouTube and my Instagram both have over 10 million views, um, not just astrophotography, but overall. So uh, if you want any more information on, on what I do um, or how, how I made this image with, of the Wizard Nebula, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you're ever on your way to Cherry Springs, I try to go about once a month. So um, hopefully I'll see you there.